Hello class, this is an overview of the 960 grid system that we're going to be using. And this should be uh, watched also in combination with the second screencast, which is more of a hands-on demonstration. So this one is really just going to talk a little bit about what it is uh, and how it works a bit. Uh, and then the other one will actually walk through a very uh, brief addition of using the 960 grid system to, to make a grid. So first of all, uh, this is the page. Uh, it's 960gs. 960, sorry, .gs. It's, so it's not .com. A lot of people try to go to, for 960.com and things like that. It's 960.gs. Uh, and it's actually used in a lot of different sites. If you go on the site here, um, if you see uh, near the bottom, you'll be able to see some of these uh, different pages here. Let me just show you another image. You can click on the, sh the show grid thing uh, and it will allow you to uh, show and hide these grids and also link out if you want to um, to those uh, projects there. So we have that uh, those options right there like that. Okay. Um, so let's get in a bit first to what are grids. We're going to talk about that, and then we're going to get into uh, some more of the details about the 960 grid system. So really what grids are, are just a way to define columns. Uh, and the columns define how wide each element on a site can be. So essentially you say, well, I have a, a total number of columns, and here's space between them, and then you add elements to it. And this is specific terms that we're going to use for it. So um, one of the terms is width, which really uh, is the total width of the grid. So that includes all of the columns and any um, other uh, pieces. Then you have a column, which is just uh, a single column in the grid. Gutter is the space between the columns. Margin is the space between the first and last columns. A cell is an item in the grid, and a row is a group of cells. So to make that a little bit uh, easier to see, let's look at it visually. So here we go. This comes from grid.mindplay.dk. Uh, it is a, a website that allows you to sort of make up your own grids. The 960 grid system we're using is a, is a fixed grid. Uh, it has a, a, a variable number of columns, 12, 16, or 24. Uh, but I'm just using this sort of small one as, a, as an example. So let's take a look. So the pixels here refer to the overall width. So that's the overall width of the grid. And this one it's 675 and the one that we're going to be working with it would be 960 pixels, hence the name 960GS. And here we have the columns. So as you can see each one of this area is a column on the grid. This grid has five columns, so there's five areas. If yours has 12, there'll be 12 of these. Um, those are the columns. And in between each of the columns are your gutters. Okay, and um, on the 960 grid system, uh, these are actually 20 pixels uh, wide as well. And so that's the space in between the colors, columns, and they help things stay spaced out. And then the last piece that we have are the margins, and the margins define um, distance between uh, the first column and the, and the edge and the last column and the edge as well. In the 960 grid system, those are all, uh, those are 10 pixels as well. So this is somewhat close to the 960 grid system. Um, one of the things that you could also see here uh, while we're looking at it is um, on the bottom here, it shows you how wide one column, two columns, three columns, four columns, and five columns are. And this is the thing that basically the 960 grid system or any other grid system handles for you. You say you want something two columns, it knows to make it that wide, 250 pixels or whatever it is in this system that you're using. So here's here it is out a bit. This is a screenshot from the, the demo page for the 960 grid system. And as you can see across the top here, we have 12 columns. And then uh, this is a row here. Uh, and this row has only one cell. That's 12 columns wide. That's 940 pixels. This row has uh, one that's one and one that is 11 wide and, and then you know goes 2, 10, 3, 9, sort of like that. Uh, so each of these rows has a certain number of cells in it that fill the width of the grid. And as you can see, uh, things in the grid always start, when they start, they start at the beginning of a column and they end at the end of a column. So even if they're less, see here this one, it doesn't go into 
the gutters in between columns. And so that helps things keep spaced out and aligned and even on the page. Okay, so let's t take a look a little bit about CSS Grid Framework. So that's a grid. You could actually use a grid if you wanted to in your design without a, a framework. Um, but let's look at uh, what these are a little bit, how they work. So basically what the frameworks do is they do most of the heavy lifting for you by helping you uh, writing a lot of CSS for you. All right. So if you decided you want to do your own grid design, like we looked at earlier, you'd have to go in and figure out all your CSS. You'd have to write to determine, you know, one column wide, two columns wide, and etc. And there's a lot of uh, systems out there for you. So uh, the one we're using is 960 Grid System. Uh, this this is a new one coming on the Less Framework, uh, which is adaptive a bit to different displays. Uh, I decided not to use that because that also comes with the addition additional problem um, that you have to figure out what it's supposed to look like and all these, and it, and it adds some more work to your style sheets. Um, and Blueprint CSS is another CSS framework as well. Um, there, so. You know why? Well, why? Why choose one of these frameworks? And there's a lot, actually a lot more reasons in this, but these are three big ones right up the of, off the bat. Speed. It makes it a lot faster to develop your site uh, because all of a sudden now you can come in, apply a few classes to your uh, HTML, and you have grids. Also, they usually provide you with some uh, files and things that help you uh, with the grids when you're designing it. So you can kind of like design against that grid uh, and before you even start your HTML and CSS. Uh, then there's a consistency to your to your pages uh, and to your design when you use a grid. Also a consistency when you if you have to hand it off to someone else, you know. So if you hand it off to someone else, they know you're using the 960 grid system. They sort of already know what it is you're doing in a lot of cases. And also cross-browser. Make sure they, they usually add some CSS and things in there to help make sure that these work on um, different browsers. And so how do they do that? Well basically um, most of it is through CSS files. They give you some CSS files that you just include along with other CSS files that you can write and they also often give you some design templates uh, to help you use uh, the grid when you're in your design process. So what are the files in the 960 grid system? So here's sort of a screenshot of some of the different files that we have here, and I'm going to go through them uh, a bit by bit. So the first one we're going to look at is templates. So you can see here the templates are listed out by um, different software, InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop, and so forth. And what these templates are basically are just um, a file that's a Photoshop file or an Illustrator file, whatever, that has the grid lines in it. And so then now you can use that on a sort of a background layer uh, and design your um, site on top of it so that you already can design based on the on the grid but without having to start out in HTML if that's not uh, what you want to do. So those are uh, the templates that they offer. And this, this download, by the way, is right on the, the front page of the 960GS uh, Dot com and it's a zip file that that you see uh, it's in the, it's in the top left and, you, and you'll download it. Uh, so the next thing they give you is CSS. And this is really the heart of it. And in fact, the 960 grid system, this file here, 960.css and the reset.css are the main ones you you use. You can also add the text CSS if you want. It gives you some default text styling, but often you'll want to do something else yourself. And so sometimes this I find can mess you up. It's Better if you want to just do a sort of a quick prototype of your site before you've really styled it. You could add this text one in, and then later once you want to do your own things, you know, re remove that uh, reference that style sheet. Uh, if you want to use 12 or 16, this is the one to do. So this works with 12 or 16 column design. If you want to use a 24 column design, then you would go ahead and uh, use that one there. So this one is the one that you would use for a 24 column design. Okay, uh, so the next one is it just uh, just to mention this demo file. They include this uh, demo file in it, and that is just to sort of give you an example. It's the same demo that's up on their website if you go to their website, and it just take lets you take a look at the HTML uh, involved in that that demo site. They also have here something that I I would recommend you try out, which are sketch sheets. So this PDF file, uh, if you open it up has sketch sheets that uh, you can print out basically and has their grid on it and then you can just use 
by hand and draw. So, you know, it'll have sort of the grid uh, design on it. And so you can start drawing out and saying, all right, well, here's a logo and, you know, main title and, you know, stuff like this. Very quickly, you can just start drawing things out by hand. And um, let's see. So uh, the next piece is, um, you know, and this this would be something you could actually even do quickly based off of your wireframes that you started to think about what you want on each page. Uh, the next one are app plugins. So the app plugins here are essentially just little plugins that go into Photoshop and Fireworks and help you um, work with the, the 960 grid system uh, and, and, and design with it. You, you know, all these things, by the way, are, are optional in terms of the sketch sheets and the plugins uh, and things like that. As we said before, um, it's really mostly the um, CSS files, the 960 CSS, the reset CSS, that you need to actually use the 960 grid system. I should mention here too quickly, by the way, to mention before, this image folder uh, contains a file that has the I think it's a, the 12 and 16 column and maybe even the, in the 24 column <sighs> pictures of the grid so you can you can use that if you want sometimes to as a background to your site as you're starting to try to develop it uh, although I can show you later on there's little plugins and things that you can use uh, to help you draw the 960 grid system over the top of your design anyway but these are just sort of to help you design to it and they're, they're, they're used by the demo file so that demo file uses those images if you want to mess around with the demo you'll have to pull out uh, make sure you take the if you move it somewhere you have to take the images with you uh, and the CSS with you uh, as well okay so let's look at the demo file itself since we've been talking about it so this is kinda of what it looks like um, it just shows you 12 column grid and then goes through and says okay you know here's um, one row that has one cell in it and then two which is one and then eleven to ten three nine and so forth and then it shows you a bunch of single cell rows uh, and, and and some ways you can do that as you're adding those along and then these down here are some examples of nesting and pushing and pulling which I'm actually not going to talk about pushing and pulling today uh, it's a little more complicated than you need I think most of the time you don't need that uh, but we will talk about the the other pieces here so um, what I'm going to do is kind of go through some rules that they have that you need to do when you're writing to your HTML. So the first rule is that you have to have a div or some other block level object that has a container around it and this goes around everything. So you notice this open div doesn't close to way way down off the page here. Um, all the all my grid stuff is inside of this container um, and actually if you look at their demo page they actually have a couple containers they have one for 12 column then they have another div for 16 columns so wherever you have your grids here whenever you're gonna add your grid classes which we're gonna get to next they have to be inside a container and the container you just list with a number how many columns that is and it's either gonna be 12 16 or 24 and um, so the next thing is then you want to define okay here's a cell and I want to say how many columns wide it is and you use the grid class for that so you add class equals grid and then the number that comes after it in this case 12 tells you how many columns so this one is one column that's 12 this is 11 columns wide so that's pretty simple that's um, mostly what you do uh, is go around defining these grids for classes. Um, the other thing that you'll notice here is that it's these are done in divs so generally what is a good idea to do is a div is a generic block level element that is used to collect other elements so most of the time what you do when you first start out is you make a few divs that are going to represent your different cells in your design and then um, add your grid classes to them to space them out properly and then you add your content inside of that um, and style your content these grids never usually get styled you shouldn't add too many styles to the div uh, cl grids themselves so that's rule number two though you just define your grids pretty pretty simple uh, and then rule number three is that after the last one so this is a grid it's 12 so that's the actually the full width of our um, entire grid so you're gonna add a clearing div as you see here so that's that's a clearing div and that gets ready ready for the next row so here's one that's one and then you have one that's 11 and then you can see a little bit cut off at the bottom here um, that is the 12 one there okay I'm gonna pull it out a little bit there we go um, 
so that's that. Okay, uh, let's move on to the piece. And so I just I just wanted to show here if you pull out a little bit how it um, relates. So uh, this is the grid 12 that we wrote here, and that m makes this 12 columns wide. This was grid 1, and it makes that one column wide. Grid 11 makes this. 11 columns wide. The little borders and stuff here are added by the text.css. It wouldn't normally uh, be in there. It's just something that they added. Um, and uh, so forth. So this here, this is a grid 3, and so that relates to this 3 column wide element right there. Okay, uh, so let's move on to the next rules. So one of the other rules is that um, if you want to have blank columns before a cell, you add a prefix class um, to it, and that prefix tells you how many blank ones you want. So for example here, prefix 1 um, says that this is going to be a one column wide grid with a grid 1, and then it's going to have one blank column in front of it. And then the other one is you use suffix to say there's blank stuff after it. So this has a suffix 10, which means it's going to have uh, 10 blank uh, columns after it. So this one would be one blank, uh, one on, and then 10 blank ones again. All right. So that's uh, it's, it's, it's relatively easy to, uh, to do. So just if you decide, oh, well, I want to have a column, but I want it to be indented, you know, I want to have a cell indented two, three, six, whatever columns you want, you can add a prefix for it. Or if you want to just end right there, and you don't want anything after it, but you don't want um, it to go to all the way to the edge, you can add the suffix and add, say, there's blank columns after it. All right? And we're still doing our div, div class clears after uh, each one of these. And so that's kind of how it works, right? So this one was a grid 1, suffix 11. So you have the grid there first, and then there's 11 blank columns after it. This is a grid 1, but it had a prefix of 1 that added this blank column here. Then you had your grid 1, and then suffix 10. So that was a suffix 10 for the 10 blanks after that, and sort of on and on. So again, a one column grid here, but a prefix of 5, so that pushes it five blank columns before it, suffix of six, there are six blank columns after it. Okay, so the other part is that you can actually nest these grid cells inside of each other. Uh, so sometimes you're going to want a design that might be something like this. You have you know, some kind of navigation here, and then you have your big content element here, but then within that content element, you know, you might say, alright, here's my thing, and oh wait, I want to highlight something. So I need three um, elements in there. So now you, these are essentially nested um, grid items here. So that's fine, it's just that on, uh, and here's, here you go, here's the first one, so there's a grid defined here, grid 6, uh, and then inside of it we've defined another grid, there's a grid 1. So on the first one in the row, that would be this one here, you put in an alpha class, like we see here. And then in the last one in that in that in, uh, nested row, you put in omega, like that, and that's what this class is. And um, I should have mentioned that a little bit earlier in case you, you didn't know, but in CSS it's perfectly legitimate to add multiple classes at the same time. You just add a space in between them. So this is grid 1, space, alpha, saying apply the grid 1 class and the alpha class, the grid 5 class and the omega class like that. So nesting is fine, it just, uh, you gotta remember to add these alpha and omegas, and if you don't, it won't quite look right, it won't work out right. So just add the alphas uh, and the omegas if you decide to nest, um, you know, a couple cells inside of an existing grid, right? Remember, it has to be inside of another one. This, this div, this div with the grid is inside of this div with the grid 6 there. That's what nesting means. Okay, so um, that is basically it. That's the uh, 960 grid system in a in a nutshell. And look out for the next uh, tutorial that will look at how to use it on some actual HTML.